the No Frills Dacia Sendero has been updated, and builds on its core values of practicality and outstanding value for money, just don't expect much in the way of equipment what's good, value for money is tough to beat, interior is spacious and impressively practical, expected to hold its value well. What's not so good, poor two-star safety rating, no USB charge points in rear, colorful paint job costs extra. The Dacia Sendero is a budget small car alternative to the popular Ford Fiesta and Volkswagen Polo. It doesn't meet those cars head-on in terms of tech or driver appeal, but rather looks to beat them on value for money. In fact, in its most basic guise, it's almost the cheapest new car on sale in Britain. Chances are you'll be willing to spend that money, too. As far as looks are concerned, with the previous barebones entry-level access model now dropped, It's not all flat white paint and large black plastic bumpers here. The range now comprises the essential and essential models, offered with body-colored bumpers and more imaginative, optional, paint options, which help the Sendero look much smarter. That said, the cabin has a surprising amount of wow factor about it, at least it does on the range topper. Sure, there are a lot of hard, scratchy plastics throughout and a few of the fixtures do feel cheap, but it's by no means grim in here. Snazzy black and white fabric trim inserts really give the place a visual lift, and there are plenty of useful storage cubbies dotted throughout. The driving position is spot on too, thanks to good visibility, clear analog dials and plenty of adjustability in the seat base and steering column. Backseat passengers won't have much to grumble about when it comes to leg and headroom either, and boot space is par for the course. The 90 horsepower petrol is the engine to go for. Get it with a 6-speed manual and in comfort trim. It'll cost a bit more, but the extra creature comforts are worth it. Sure, the light steering can feel a bit vague at quicker speeds, but the Sandero is fine to drive and is easy to maneuver around town. It's pretty comfortable, even on long drives, while wind and road noise is minimal on the motorway. Now that the gutless 65 horsepower petrol motor has been dropped, your sole choice is the peppy 90 horsepower petrol paired with a 6-speed manual or auto. Its straight-line performance won't knock your socks off, but there's more than enough punch on offer for comfortable motorway cruising. Speaking of extras, for creature comforts like a proper infotainment display with built-in sat-nav, cruise control, automatic lights and wipers, a reversing camera and parking sensors, you'll have to go for a top-spec expression car. The Sendero has long had the accolade of being the cheapest car in Britain, and aside from the MG3, it's still miles cheaper than anything else on sale today. The MG3 is priced to slot in between the Sendero's base essential and more comprehensive expression trim, but the Sendero still retains its edge thanks to more comprehensive standard equipment for the price and a more polished driving experience. Alternatives like the Volkswagen Polo, Renault Clio, on which it's based, and the Ford Fiesta may offer more refinement, but they all cost at least £6,000 extra in base trim. With such a massive saving, we would opt for a Sandero in top expression trim which adds just £1,000 to the base price and includes some desirable features like keyless entry, 8.0-inch media display and electric rear windows. The much smaller Kia Picanto does get close to the Sandero's price in its most basic form, but it's very sparsely equipped and has much less passenger and luggage space. The Dacia Sandero is a great choice for trips around town, it has light, if slightly lifeless, steering, a comfort-orientated suspension setup and enough poke to zip into gaps in traffic. The driving position is good, with decent visibility, and the optional automatic transmission helps take the stress out of the daily commute. Rear parking sensors and a rear-view camera are standard on the top expression trim, but the car is compact enough not to need them. The driver won't have any trouble getting comfortable behind the adjustable steering wheel, and although there aren't any electric controls here, the seats offer plenty of movement to find a good spot. The front passenger seat doesn't offer height adjustment, but there is a small armrest and plenty of head and legroom. A set of cup holders are built into the center console and there's space for a mobile phone ahead of the gear lever. The rear seats are comfy, too, with enough space for two adults or a set of baby seats which can be affixed to the two outer isofix mountings. The middle rear seat is a bit tight for larger passengers, but three teenagers should fit across the rear bench. A solitary cup holder is provided for passengers in the back. You get 328 liters of boot space with the rear seats up, that's more generous than the 292 liters you get in the Ford Fiesta, but slightly less than the VW Polo's 351 liters. 
Fold the 60-40 split rear seats down and you get 1,108 liters in total, again falling in the middle of its class. The boot opening is wide but there is a hefty lip to lift heavy things over, plus the boot floor isn't completely flat either. You do get a few handy hooks for bags, though, and there is a space under the boot floor for the optional spare wheel. The expression trim adds a leather-covered steering wheel, plush your seat fabric and an 8.0-inch infotainment touchscreen. The base model requires you to use your smartphone instead. The screen incorporates a rear camera to go along with the parking sensors that are also part of the expression trim. The system is simple enough to use and offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity if you prefer to use your own apps. Smart rotary knobs control the heating and ventilation system and the steering wheel is equipped with buttons for the cruise control, while the audio system gets its own stubby adjustment stock below the headlight controls. A 12-volt socket and USB port are located below the temperature controls and the top trim even gets keyless entry. The recent update has shrunk the range down to just one engine option, a 90-horsepower turbocharged petrol which was arguably the pick of the bunch anyway. It gets the Sendero from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 11.7 seconds, not a blistering time, but way quicker than the anemic 80-horsepower Volkswagen Polo and not far behind the 10.7 seconds of the 100-horsepower Ford Fiesta. The Sendero has an official average of 53.3 miles per gallon in mixed driving conditions, this once again compares well with the base Polo which manages an official 51.1 miles per gallon and the Renault Clio which uses the same 90 horsepower engine and offers 54 miles per gallon. The automatic Sendero is a tad slower to 62 miles per hour, 13.4 seconds, and a bit thirstier at 48.7 miles per gallon. Opting for this transmission could still be a good idea if you spend a fair portion of your daily driving in traffic though. All Sendero models come with Hill Start Assist, Advanced Emergency Braking, although only effective in avoiding other cars, and not pedestrians or cyclists, six airbags and cruise control. The expression trim adds keyless entry, a rear-view camera and rear parking sensors, front parking sensors are optional.